All right, what's up guys? It's Tuesday night, just got home from the shore. Memorial Day weekend was a good one. And now it's time to prep for a drift event. I'll tell you guys a little bit more at the end of the video what this drift event is that we're supposed to be doing now, but we're gonna run over to Chris's because I have some stuff I need to drop off at his garage and check out a new car that he picked up. Um, of course, you know, in the BMW family, but uh, I'll give you guys a close up look of it. And this is what he's gonna be bringing to the drift event. So uh, you guys will be seeing a lot of this car coming up. So this has been sitting, this I've driven down to the shore back, I put a lot of miles on this car. I'm gonna let that sit and we're gonna take good old Judy. Well, maybe this will help me decide if I wanna get an MS3 cam. Uh, it smells like, I feel like I was getting, my legs were getting hit yeah, with raw fuel. Yeah, we're like 12 fucking minutes. <laughs> yeah, you probably just laced like three gallons of gas right there. Yeah, seriously. It sounds good. It sounds real good. Yeah, sounds Once good. we get it down to like 800 tuned, right? It might, you know. Yeah. Oh, it's not a better. It's a smaller exhaust. All right guys, so I gave you a little look on Chris's new drift car. We'll get back to that one um, in a later video. We'll do a little rundown of it. Once I have a little bit more time, we were kind of pressed for time last night, but got these new Stance Co. Street Club stickers. They are neon, yellow, and purple. They match the car. So they're about six inches long and uh, almost three inches tall, I believe. They will be up on the site, so grab one of these guys. I got plenty of them. Um, they'll be up on the site. I'll put the link below. Uh, so pick one of those up, and I also have the send it stickers on there too. So make sure you pick one of those up. Now for the drift event we're gonna be doing, here's the details on that. I started looking about last week for an event anywhere. Right now, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, we can't have drift events anywhere in the area. Uh, so I was like, all right, let's drive south. So I found an event in North Carolina, wasn't, didn't really work into this, my schedule. So then I uh, thought that I could hit up my buddy Jason who runs swing set events down in Shenandoah in Virginia. And they have an event on June 13th. So Virginia is supposed to be opening up on June 10th. So as long as everything stays on schedule with the state of Virginia, the June 13th event will be on. So finally we have an event coming up that we can look forward to drive. And I have a list of things that, to get done on the car uh, that'll go over as well. So we're gonna drive out Friday night, drift for 12 hours on Saturday, it's 10 to 10, and then uh, probably stay in the area Sunday and come home later Sunday evening. So looking forward to that, so stay tuned for a drift event, finally. My list includes rear axle bolts. I need to get new axle bolts. Nut and bolt the front end. If there's some street driving and some street drifting, I wanna make sure everything stayed tight um, I was going to replace my brake master cylinder. I don't know if I still am, but I am going to flush the brake fluid and I want to adjust the master. Bleed my handbrake and add a Willwood pressure, residual pressure valve. Add water and water wetter to my cooling system and bleed the system again. My front turbo has a coolant leak, so I have to pull the rad to fix that. So that's where the bleed in the coolant system comes into play. 
I want to do a boost leak test to make sure everything is sealed up and good. It's been a long time since I've done that. Uh, I had to replace my alternator because it is surging at high RPM and then sometimes at low RPM at idle it'll drop down to like 11 volts. I have to replace the O2 sensor for my AEM wideband which includes dropping the downpipe on the exhaust and I need to install some new harnesses. So I got these new harnesses from NRG. They are purple. They're gonna match the car a lot better than the red ones that are in there now. So we'll get these guys installed before the event. I also got a stack of drift tires here. So for the event, uh, I have, I'm gonna have to bring a couple. I'm gonna try and get all these mounted because God knows I have enough Ankies. Uh, I don't really drift on my RPF ones anymore. So I don't think I'm gonna use those. Another thing that I'm gonna be doing is gripping up the car. So I was talking with Chris and I don't know if you guys saw in my Dover video when we were tandeming, he would gap me on the straightaway when we would turn off, turn off of grid and he would literally just put bus lengths on me and I had to basically shallow up and to catch up to him. And it was pretty tough. His car makes 186 horse or I think no, the car he had I think makes like 180 some horsepower, 190 horsepower. And my car probably makes in like the mid low to mid threes. So it didn't make sense to me as to why he was pulling such a gap on me. Well, we got to talking and he informed me that his car was super towed in, which allowed it to grip up on the straightaway. My car, was, first gear was like useless. As soon as I was getting the, would get into boost, it would just blow the tires off and I would have to shift the second and then run up to him as fast as I could. So what I'm gonna do is try towing in the rear a bunch to grip up the car in a straight line grip and be able to ultimately keep up because Chris is gonna be bringing the LS BMW. So it's gonna be a little more difficult for me to keep up because he's gonna be making, he just did a cam and all that. He's gonna be making like around 450 wheel on a car that's gripped up and towed in and all that. So I'm gonna have to do everything I can on my car to get it gripped up so that I can at least catch up to him on a run up uh, once we start drifting. I have those tires. My girlfriend has 17 is tires off her old car. So I'm gonna paint these guys. These are my seven, two of my four 17s, they're Mustang wheels. I'm gonna paint them just in case I need them. Uh, I'll probably put one of her sets of 17s on there. And then um, I haven't decided if I'm painting the pink ones yet, but I then will have to paint that wheel as well and repaint that front one because it got a little banged up. Um, then I'll see what I have left and then I'll go ahead and probably paint these rears or leave them. Haven't decided yet, but it probably would look better if they all match. Two hours later. All right, so I've been getting after it, doing some painting. The Mustang wheels are now highlighter yellow. That Anki wheel was already highlighter yellow, but it faded a bit in the sun. This color doesn't last very long. Um, when it's just laying out in the sun, it fades. As you can see with the wheels that are on the car right now, they faded after a few months of direct sun exposure. So they're gonna be getting the same touch up treatment. And now I'm just doing this other 18 by 10 and a half Anki. That is flat black so that I can get a good match. So I'm gonna paint the barrel first. I just sanded it down with a scuff pad, wiped it with alcohol, um, hit it with white primer because this highlighter yellow works best on a white base. So you do a white primer, then you do the highlighter color that dries matte, and then you spray gloss clear over it. And you'll get a bright wheel that almost glows at night. So this should look cool with a car has all matching highlighter wheels on it that are just bright, vibrant, freshly painted. And especially because we're going to be doing some night drifting, it'll look even better. So I'm doing a really bad job today at keeping you guys along, but all the wheels are painted like so. I don't even know if I showed you that already, but then I just added on a little plate here that shows you when the battery cutoff switch is in the on or off position because no one really knew put my little rain cover back on. No one really knew if it was on or off. So there was a situation once on track where I needed my cutoff switch killed while on grid and the grid worker didn't really know which direction to turn. So obviously you can see which direction you need to turn. You'll know where to do it right away. Slapped some of the new Stansco stickers on the car. One up here, one back there. 
Got rid of some of the old stickers on here. Just kind of cleaned it up a little bit. This window is almost empty once again, but we got that new boy on there. Remember, grab one, link in bio, or link in the description. So it's the next day, and it's raining. It's like misting out. It's the annoying rain that doesn't allow me to ever get anything done. So uh, what I was gonna do was nut and bolt the front end and make sure that all my new suspension components and the steering stuff are still tight after some street drive, a lot of street driving actually, and uh, some street drifting. So it's been put through some abuse and I wanna make sure everything is tight and good to go so that I won't have to worry on the track. Uh, so I'm gonna start by doing that. And while I'm doing that, what I'm gonna do is actually just gravity bleed the front brakes a little bit. Uh, so I'll crack the master cylinder reservoir open. I'll crack open the bleeder valves and I'll just let some fresh fluid run out to get some fresh fluid in the lines and get any of the old fluid out uh, of the lines. So. I'm probably going to do that now, even though it's misting out. It is what it is. So it's important to nut and bolt your cars because I, uh, everyone stresses it before an event. And this is the reason why I just went to nut and bolt. And as I loosened the wheel, everything's just kind of felt loose and it was weird to me. So once I popped the wheel off, all I did was push in on the rotor and my strut bolts somehow became loose. So the bottom one was loose, which then allowed the top one to loosen, which allowed the camber to be shifting. And I noticed uh, like last week, whenever the last time I was that drove the car, the camber didn't look the same from side to side. Well, it's because this side was cambered out. So I pushed it back into the maximum camber amount, um, put some Loctite on this bottom bolt and got everything nice and tight again. So that is gonna be something that I will keep an eye on if they are re-loosening for some reason, but they are definitely tight now and that bottom one has Loctite on it. The camber bolt is cranked down. And there's no movement there. Thankfully, what I really wanted to check was my new tie rods and they're still tight. The adjustment locks are tight. Um, the bolt going through the knuckle is also tight. So we're good there. Now what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna tighten, make sure the, the bottom collar here is tight, the lock collar, and then crack this bleeder valve right here and let some of the fluid gravity bleed out um, just so we have some fresh fluid in the lines. And then uh, this corner is done. So my method for gravity bleeding is crack the bleeder, put the pan underneath, let it drip, and then just keep an eye on the fluid reservoir. Fluid reservoir is gonna go down, top it off with new fluid as necessary. I'm gonna let that drop a little bit more, and then I'm gonna hop over to this side. I'll top that off, and I'll hop over to this side, let it drain. So it's basically what it's doing is just getting um, clean, fresh fluid into the brake lines and getting rid of the old fluid that was in the lines. It's a pretty simple thing that uh, I don't think a lot of people think of doing. Uh, I might be doing it on the V soon as well because I've never changed the brake, brake fluid on that car and brake fluid isn't something that you'll never change because you do eventually get water and moisture in the lines and that can affect your braking performance. So I want to go to this drift event with this car in perfect shape, the best it possibly can be, no corners cut. So I don't have to really worry about, hopefully, fingers crossed, I hope I'm not jinxing myself, worry about anything giving me issues while at the event. All right guys, so I'm gonna wrap this video up here and uh, we'll continue with the prep and the next thing that we get to working on with the 3000. Um, probably gonna be the harnesses next and then just working down that list. But like I said, we have the drift event in two weeks now and we should be ready to go by then. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and uh, we'll have some drifty content for you soon.